Hello everyone, this is a Dell Optiplex GX280 small desktop form factor PC. I have acquired this a little while ago, and the main reason for this video is to show the problem that I've been having it, in which case that is preventing it from working. So, first things first, as you all can see, it's pretty beat up. This was a computer found in a school. Totally disassembled. The memory had been taken out of it. The CPU fan was disassembled. The screws for the CPU fan were underneath the motherboard. The DVD ROM drive was not working. There was no floppy disk drive. And almost all the cables on the inside had been unplugged. Not to mention the hard drive had been taken out of it. Out of all of these pieces, I was able to put back all of them except the floppy disk drive as that was gone while all the others were in a bin sitting right next to it. The hard drive, despite having a sticker which said erased, did work and had a copy of Windows 10 on it. However, it would crash every time it would boot up. I assumed this was due to Windows 10 being beyond this computer's hardware capabilities. In addition, it also had some sort of Wi-Fi module in it. If we go over there, Netis Systems, a Netis Systems wireless internet card, came with three sticks of 512 megabyte RAM. However, also inside it were four sticks of one gigabyte RAM, which are currently in it right now. The computer has been, of course, put together by me. The old DVD drive, or CD drive for a fact, it didn't have DVDs here, was unable to read any discs. It has a Memorex drive in instead. It has a Sony floppy disk drive out of another Dell computer. And so far it is all put together. However, the problem is it is unable to boot any operating system or even install anything Windows Vista and after because the CPU will consistently overheat every single time. The only operating system that I've even been able to get installed on it is Windows XP Professional, the operating system it came with. And should be over here and yes you can see Windows XP professional so to show what it does first I'll open it up so you all can see inside this computer has no modifications outside of the factory that have been left in it right now it's in its stock configuration aside from the RAM it has the four gigabytes of RAM I'm not sure which RAM originally came with it. Here it is. We have our CPU fan, which of course the screws have been found. It's all put back together. The label is taped on because I peeled it off to oil the fan because it needed oil. And even then the bearings are still not quite right. Power supply. There's the four gigabytes of RAM. No expansion cards in anything. This is only a placeholder, which is not connected to anything. And otherwise, it is all the same hard drive. I'm not sure if that's original, but it looks to be CD-ROM drive and floppy disk drive. All hardware configurations are set correctly, and everything should be working. However, there is a problem, and unfortunately, the green CPU straps, which held the CPU on, broke both of them when I tried to take it apart. They went together like this, and you would pinch them. Both of them snapped, and I will have to either buy replacements if I can get this working, or just go without them if I end up not getting this computer working. And I'll probably just end up throwing it away or selling it for parts. But anyways, 
Here's the inside. I've cleaned it out as much as I could because there is no compressed air that I have. And another thing I've done is in the testing of this computer, specifically with the CPU, continually overheating, I have replaced the thermal paste on the CPU. I believe I did it improperly as I took off the cooler after I put the paste on and then put the cooler back in without reapplying the thermal paste, which is something I've heard you shouldn't do. So just now the thermal paste has been re reapplied around an hour ago. And so has the thermal paste on this heat sink. I'm not exactly sure what this is for, if it's the graphics, maybe. And then there's also this other chip down here. Has no heat sink on it, hasn't had one. But aside from that, almost all the dust has been removed. And the CPU I have cleaned off with isopropyl alcohol each just now this time when the thermal paste was applied. And the, C and the computer is overall relatively clean. If we look at the back here, we see everything is present. Everything's set up right. I did the best job I could at putting this thing back together and it has gone back together fully. So, to show you all what it is doing, I'll bring my keyboard up here, and I'll turn on the computer, and we'll see what it does. Now, one quick note, I just realized this, before we turn it on, this graphics card was in the bundle of parts that the computer came in. With this graphics card installed, the CP not the CPU, the computer will still not boot as the CPU will overheat and even without the graphics card the computer will still as said previously overheat. This right here is a extra slot which is meant to be plugged into this slot on the card to give the card VGA as it only has the DVI and surprisingly HDMI connectors for its output not sure if you can see the model on this card. I couldn't find a company or a model name explicitly written. There's the tag that is on it. I have no idea what the hardware capabilities of this graphics card are, as I have not been able to test them in the computer since it has not been working. As we can see, the power light for the motherboard is on. So without further ado, let us turn on the computer and show what it does. Uh, let's do case open. It's got to reach the power button. There we are. As you saw, the Windows XP loading screen just flashed for a brief second and then the computer shut off. This is what it has been doing consistently ever since I've gotten it. And even with Windows, it would, interestingly enough, not crash like that and shut off by overheating, but Actually, Windows would display a message that would flash up in the corner, your PC needs to restart X00XX00, and then the computer would be stuck in an infinite booting loop, but would remain on. However, now the CPU is consistently overheating, and the computer is thus shutting down. Now, there are only a few things which I have ruled out at this possibility to have the to have been causing that. In my testing, I've removed the RAM, put the RAM out, put it back in, put the different types over there. Still, no difference was made at all. I have put thermal paste on the CPU and this heatsink here, so obviously it is not an issue with either of those chips. Cooling, and the CPU 
appears externally to be okay. There doesn't seem to be any heat damage from it, despite it getting very hot and shutting off. The motherboard appears to be in fine condition. There don't appear to be any cracks or broken traces anywhere. But now this rule now this moves on to the issues which could actually be with the computer. The, the issues which the computer might actually be having. We have either the fact that the CPU is defective or the fact that the CPU's overheating is being caused by the several capacitors which are bulging. I don't know if you can see there. Bulging over there. These ones are slightly bulged. This one right here, slightly bulged, and especially underneath the CPU. I'm going to take the CPU off real quick so we can have a look at those capacitors, because if any of the capacitors on this board would be the culprit of the overheating, it will definitely be the ones underneath the fan. So I'll go ahead and show you those right now. So here they are, each of the capacitors, and they all may look only slightly bulged at first glance. However, the main thing which concerns me, which you may be able to see, is right there at this closest capacitor to us, the fact that there appears to be some sort of leakage on the board, and also on the top of the other right there. And on the other side, I don't know if you can see in there, see if we can get the focus on it. That one right there as well, which is being hidden under this, heat sink does not appear to be particularly healthy so those would be the only culprits that could be causing the issues with this computer aside from the pentium 4 being defective and the reason why i say that is because that cpu gets extremely hot very very quickly well i probably should not have done this i did a test without the cooler on just for a few seconds the cpu went up around three degrees per second which is pretty high in terms of just being turned on now i didn't test this necessarily with other computers but in comparison to other computers which are passively cooled and still working three degrees per second appears to be extremely high and quite an unreasonably fast amount of time to get that hot. And in testing as well with the cooler on all the way at the bottom, with a the thermal probe at the bottom, the CPU reaches over 100 degrees, around 100 degrees, slightly over it, before it shuts off. So that is an extremely fast amount of time and a very high temperature to get to within that time so that leads me to believe that the pentium itself the processor may be defective and all that is needed is a new pentium 4 to fix things as a as where i'm going to get a pentium 4 i'm not too sure because to sneak one out of the other computers at that school would be much less likely. However, it may be possible. But in terms of buying a Pentium 4, I'm probably not going to buy a Pentium 4 just to put in this computer. So let me know what you guys think, if it's capacitors, if it's the CPU, or if it's another problem, which I have not mentioned. But with that, this computer will remain non-functional as it is now but hopefully i can get it working sometime in the near future thanks for watching goodbye